Well, good morning, <laughs> Michael here, and today's meditation just puts a smile on my face. I don't know about you, but I love to have a smile on my face. There's just certain things, uh, or maybe even certain people, that just put a smile on your face. Makes the world feel better. And I've remembered, you know, sometimes when life gets rough and uh, you're almost on the brink of depression, and you come to your senses, you have to say to yourself, well, what gave me pleasure? What simple thing I used to do gave me pleasure? And you have to get back to scratch and do the simple things that sometimes gives you pleasure. And so today's verse of meditation comes from Deuteronomy 33. And so we just want to read a couple of verses there to include that index verse before we get to the exposition. Reading from 26 then. There is none like unto the God of Jehuran, who rideth upon the heavens in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall trust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down to you. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So Spurgeon then focuses on verse 28. He subtitles it, the dew of heaven for the verse reads his heavens shall drop down dew and so his exposition he writes what the dew in the east is to the world of nature that is the influence of the spirit in the realm of grace how greatly do I need it without the spirit of God I am a, a dry and withered thing I droop, I fade, I die. How sweetly does this dew refresh me? When once favored with it, I feel happy, lively, vigorous, elevated. I want nothing more than the Holy Spirit. Brings me life and all that life requires. All else without the dew of the Spirit is less than nothing to me. I hear, I read, I pray, I sing, I go to the table of communion, and I feel no blessing there until the Holy Ghost visits me. But when he bedews me, every means of grace is sweet and profitable. What a promise is this for me! His heavens shall drop down dew. I shall be visited with grace. I shall not be left to my natural drought, or to the world's burning heat, or to the Sirocco of satanic temptations. Oh, that I may at this very hour feel the gentle, silent, saturating dew of the Lord. Why should I not? He who has made me to live as the grass lives in the meadow will treat me as he treats the grass. He will refresh me from above. Grass cannot call for dew as I do. Surely the Lord who visits the unpraying plant will answer to his pleading child. Yes, yes, yes. God so good, God so great. 
He made us. He knows what we need of. Oh, may that dew continue to refresh us in our walk, in our talk, and in our living. Well, Michael here, trust you enjoy the reading of the word and the exposition. Until next time, be blessed. Have a great day.